So if you watched my review on Insta360 Go 2 before, you'll know that I really enjoyed that camera and actually ended up using it after the review for personal stuff like holidays, but also professional stuff like behind the scenes footage and things like that. So this is Insta360 Go 3, which I was really looking forward to. But now I'm looking at it and now I've used it for a little bit, I actually find the use cases quite niche and we'll get into that in this review. Okay, so before we get into the existential stuff, let's talk about what this camera is actually about. So obviously this is the Go 3 unit itself and this is the Action Pod, which is new and comes with the camera. So you just slot the Go 3 into the Action Pod like that. And now you've got a fully fledged action camera screen. You've got quick switch buttons, an on and off button and a record button. And then at any point you can just sort of take that back out again. Now this obviously has its own built in battery, but once you put it into the action pod, the action pod will start charging the camera itself. The screen on the action pod is actually a flip screen. So you can just flip it up like that anytime you want to film yourself. And then you can flip it back down. That's a good sort of middle ground between the front touch screen of the Action 4 um, and the non-touchscreen of the GoPro Hero 12 there. And it has to be said, as always with Insta360, their UI is on point. The touchscreen is super sensitive. In fact, it's probably my favorite touchscreen to use in any of the action cameras, really. It's just been very, very good. Um, every touch is responded to, whereas on the GoPro, um, I know that sometimes I'll touch it and it just won't be doing anything. This is just super quick um, and super easy to maneuver around, change the settings, um, change the different modes and yeah like Insta360 do really well with their UI so really happy with that. I love the modes that Insta360 puts in their camera so there's no shortage of fun ways to use your camera. So you've got photo, video, free frame video, time lapse, time shift, slow motion, loop recording, star lapse, interval, HDR photo, there's just so much there to play with. Uh, the free frame video is also still really good to have so it captures sort of the whole sensor um, in a sort of circular format and then you can crop that to either landscape or uh, vertical for social media. Um, so I think that's a really cool idea and I'm glad they've kept that in here. Um, the only difference is for the main video format, they've updated that to 2.7K instead of 1440p, so a small increase in quality there. And talking of quality, the quality has been improved since the Go 2. You'll definitely notice a bit of difference there. Like I said, the sensor's been uh, made bigger and some of the processing is better. Um, so you will see a difference in quality between this and the Go 2. Something I love and I think is the way forward with these cameras is the quick release system, the magnetic quick release system, which is similar to what DJI does in the Action 4. You'll see it on the bottom of the Action Pod here. Um, you've got these two little slots. Um, and then on the adapters, you've got two little sort of magnetic adapters here and they just slot in like that and then you've got a little ball head on your action pod. But the great thing is not just on the action pod, you can actually take the camera out of the action pod itself and the camera has the little slots here for, to put in and then you can just, if I get it the right way, slot that in and now you've got a ball head on the actual camera itself. So I think these quick release systems are great. It's a shame that it's different from the DJI one. I know they're different brands, um, but it'd be nice if we could just have one sort of universal quick release magnetic system that they all do. So we don't have to keep buying all these different accessories. Um, I realize that's the point, but you know, one can dream, I guess. But in my opinion, it's when the camera is out of the action pod that you're actually getting the most out of this camera. Obviously the back is still magnetic as well. Um, which means you can attach it to any magnetic surface. Um, and this obviously leads to some really interesting shots like this one of the air hockey here. As I've just said a second ago, you can attach it via the magnetic quick release system um, to any of the Insta360 accessories. But I think that these two accessories are the most important things in the whole Go ecosystem. Starting with the magnetic pendant, which you've seen it before, you put it around your neck, you put it under your clothes, and then you can attach the go through to it like that and then you have sort of fpv camera um, which is quite discreet as well you don't have to worry about uh, you know when you want to put an action camera on you've got to put a whole sort of harness on and attach that on um, with this you don't have to do that because it's light enough that you can just attach it by a magnet and let it go which i think is one of the huge selling points of this camera uh, and then moving on from that a sort of upgrade from that then is this little clip mount here so you put the go three inside the clip mount and you attach that to anything you want. So I've been using it with a sort of baseball cap. You've then got a full sort of FPV looking around. You don't have to worry about big head straps um, or anything like that weighing you down. It's still, I mean, it's quite obvious and noticeable, but 
you can still sort of walk around like this and it'd be absolutely fine um, and people won't question it too much I don't think especially if you're doing like an activity on holiday or something like that um, or playing with your kids or something um, and I think this and the magnetic mount is where this camera really shines because that's kind of what it's for is capturing those moments um, while still staying in the moment. Now imagine if you're um, a dad and you've got kids or and you're running around with the kids and you just want to play but you don't want to film as such and have a camera in your hand and be out the moment. Something like this um, could be really good for just capturing those moments and not having to think about it. Um, and I think that's where this camera does come into its own. But now onto the problem I have with this camera and that is not just the price point but the action pod. By the way, if you're enjoying this video then you could go and hit the thumbs up button for the, for the bad jokes because when you put the camera inside the action pod, it now becomes a competitor to this, the DJI Action 4, the GoPro Hero 12, and Insta360 Zone RS. But it can't compete with any of these cameras in any meaningful way. For a start, it's not waterproof. So if you took the camera out of the action pod, it becomes waterproof. But as soon as you put it in the action pod, it's water resistant, but not fully waterproof like these other guys. Secondly, the sensor is not big enough. So the sensor on all of these cameras is bigger than the Insta360 Insta Go 3. And that means the detail is better, the low light performance is better, um, and all of these just have a general better quality of image than the Go 3 does. And the low light suffers incredibly as well, especially when you compare it to something like the Action 4, which is great in low light. And understand this camera isn't about the specs and the performance, um, and it's more about the experience. but I used it in some low light conditions when I was in Vegas and Dubai and I can just say that it's almost worth not looking back at the footage because the low light does suffer that much. In terms of resolutions on this camera you can still only get 2.7k up to 30 frames per second. The rest of these are all doing at least 4k and something about the processing just isn't right here. If you go to take a photo which is something I do on action cameras quite a lot, when you click the button you're then waiting for it to load, capture, save that's taking about two seconds maybe to take that photo it's just a whole process that shouldn't take that long and i understand that it's doing the pure shot and everything um, but to take a photo should not take that long on an action camera and that i guess is why i'm struggling um, with getting my head around who this camera is for for this review because when i took this camera out uh, with the action 4 on holiday I ended up reaching for the Action 4 every time. Because in my head I was thinking, there's not actually that much I'm gonna need the Insta360 for in terms of how many times do I need to put my camera in a really tight space and get that shot from inside of a cup or something like that when I'm on holiday or... And the only time I took my Insta360 Go 3 is when I thought an FPV shot was gonna be good. So like this quad biking shot, for example. Um, and that's again where I think this really comes in its own. But take this thing out of the action pod and I think it really reminds me of the original premise of the go-to. And that is that it's a compact, discreet camera for capturing memories. And I think at the heart of it, this camera is still really good at that. Like I mentioned before, if you're a parent just trying to capture some memories, or if you're on holiday and you just want to capture some FPV stuff, or even if you're using this for business um, and you want to capture some sort of behind the scenes um, you know, of filmmaking or something like that when you're sort of got it on your chest and you just want to capture some behind the scenes footage. This camera excels at that sort of thing without being too much of a burden. Just make sure the light is good quality because this just doesn't hold up in low light. So to conclude then, I don't dislike the Insta360 GO 3. I just think it's a classic case of where they've had to keep updating a system and now they've updated it to the point where it competes with something that's a lot better at a lot of the things it does. From a quality standpoint, it is actually a big improvement from the GO 2, which is great, but I can't help thinking that maybe the GO 3 now just needs to be an extension to the Insta360 RS. You could use the battery grip and just put it on the bottom of the action pod and just have it slot in to something like that. And that would mean that you could buy the Insta360 GO 3 camera on its own without the action pod, which would make it a better price. Um, maybe you could include these sort of accessories with it as well, because like I say, they are one of the main reasons I would use this. It would make it a better price, but also the action pod is kind of an extra anyway. 
like I don't know if most people are going to be using it with the action pod and if you're buying it to use in the action pod you may as well just buy another action camera. For the hardcore dads out there looking to capture the best memories there's definitely value in a camera like this but for anyone else um, you can check out my Insta360 RS review which I'll put down below in the description. That's been it from me, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful at all, hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna subscribe and see more videos on tech for creatives, subscribe down below. And if you've got any comments or questions, let me know in the comment section, I'll get back to you. Cheers for watching.